Lionhearts, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. We are back in Branson and we are resuming our tour of the Branson Celebrity Car Museum. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And then here they have some of the screen used vehicles from Stranger Things. And then, of course, the Hawkins Police Department. This was Paul Harvey's car, the radio legend. This, yeah, this was the radio legend, but initially it was her car. She actually came to pick him up at a radio station in this car, and that's how they met. Here's when they met, and here's later on in life. Same car. That's crazy. And then you guys had, it was completely restored. Yep. And this this still, this still belongs to uh, the Harvey family. This is one of the few cars in here that doesn't belong to the museum. It's great that they have it on display somewhere, though. What a great story. Absolutely. And People a beautiful car. Power. And now you know the rest of the story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was his catchphrase. Mega Force. That's one of the things I miss about the beauty of the '80s was that almost every show had a, you know, like a custom helicopter, motorcycle, like some sort of vehicle that was totally, completely customized. Wow. Wow, that is so cool. Oh, and it's signed. <laughs> the good guys always win, even the 80s. Practical props. Oh yeah, you know, there's like, like nothing in there. Yeah, it's like, but see all of these switches? They actually did things. Like this, this actually moves. This actually shot fire and spun around. Oh! Like everything in here actually practically worked. This is like before they had CGI or any of the good effects. So Before they got lazy. Exactly. Dude, so cool. This is like one of the best things that you have. I mean, it's I look amazing. for rarity stuff when I go to museums and I respect that so much that you have these kind of things. Wow. And the great thing about this is it runs and drives. You know, wow. you know, uh, the there's a, a story. This production had so little money, you know, just to start with. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I think the director was actually heard driving one of these because stuntmen walked off at, at the end of the film. The stuntmen hadn't been paid, and so what they did is they took the bodies off of the motorcycles and just drove the motorcycle. They're like, take this. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. Smart move. At least some of this stuff lasted. Absolutely. There's a signed clapboard from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This was a prop basketball from Die Hard with a Vengeance. But I'm really blown away by them having Tom Hanks Forrest Gump suitcase. And then here they have the hover motorcycle from Back to the Future 2. One of the actual ones, Hill Valley. Right here was Norman Reedus's personal bike. Okay, now this bike it, it never appeared in this uh, in the Walking Dead or anything like that. But what happened was uh, Classified Moto was building this bike for Norman Reedus. He sketched out what he wanted on a napkin, and and he stayed in constant touch with them. And then they built him this bike, and it's just amazing. It's incredible. Classified Moto is just the best. And so they delivered it to him on the set of Walking Dead. And as you can see in the photo, there he is. And that's on the set. Um, and this was his personal bike. Well, then uh, he contacted the uh, producers of the show and was like, we should have Classified Moto build my next bike. Yeah. And so they built two bikes for, for the show that he rode after he lost his chopper. Yeah, and so, that's awesome. So, and they look very similar to this. So there's, it's kind of like, this is kind of like, like the, the first version, the first vision, but then they came up with the two that eventually wound up on the show. Here we have Steve Martin's Pink Panther chair during the 2006 remake. 
but wow take a look at what we're gonna see next you may recognize this from flying through the sky off of a cliff that is the Thelma and Louise car at least one of them because we know that one of them took a took a ride so this one here has a real interesting story too uh, there were about five of these built for the film, okay? There was a hero car, which they did all the uh, close-ups. It actually had a top. Then there was a stunt car. And then there were three or four of uh, cars like this. And what they did was they took a coupe and they chopped the top and they made it into a convertible. So they actually, you know, with their Hollywood magic, really quick. Yeah a convertible like they took all the harsh edges off and then when they got down to the last moments of the film where they're shooting the cars off the cliff they had them all five lined up because they were like they were going to start with the crappiest ones right right <laughs> and, yeah and until so, they get the perfect so, shot so the first one went off and just went whoop, bam and just smashed you know they're like oh god so then the next one they weighted the trunk and they put a little bit of an incline and it sailed perfectly this one was going to be the third one, and it was safe. So, so the whole reason it's here, because the plan for this car was to go off the cliff. It got a reprieve from the warden. And you even have a Thumb and Louise jean jacket back there. Thumb, not, thumb, thumb jacket. I think this was one of Brad Pitt's first roles. Yep. Kind of made him a superstar. That's really cool to see that. I was always a Gina Davis fan, so... Very cool to see. This, this is Christian Bale's car from Ford versus Ferrari. Yeah. Well, part of it, that's the, you said it's the camera car, so. This is the camera car. They also, this is also known as a RDV or a remote drive vehicle. What they do is they have a pod that fits on the back and the stunt driver will drive at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. While the actor sits in here, what they'll do is they'll take a door off, take the back panel off, take the windshield out and punch a camera through. You know, so that so you, you can get the see, vision, yeah. yeah. But so he doesn't have to, to worry about not killing himself because this guy's got the wheel, you know. So he can concentrate on his acting while he's zooming around the track at 150 miles an hour. That's and very they only cool. built one camera car, but what they did is every interior shot scene that you see with one of these cars, they use this car. So so all they would have to do is take the doors and the hood off of the car and then just paint that t-section and then it was the blue car see right here you can see the paint where it was the blue oh, car yeah. from the and this is the daytona 98 and the little uh door for the camera yeah, yeah. wow so what's the story with the ecto-1 i noticed there's a few alterations to it this is actually the world's first Ecto-1 replica. It was built in 1988 when movies were still the hot thing, you know. It's actually a 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor, so it's the Hard to find. One. Yeah, it's the correct one. Uh, and a, a really talented gentleman named Joe Pace up in Kansas City uh, built this basically from scratch. He pulled it out of a field and built it back in 1988. I think he, 88, 89, and he put it in uh, like a lot of uh, stereo contests and and uh, different things around the country. But I say it looks like it could have been a good parade car. Absolutely, absolutely. And the best part about it, it glows in the dark. Oh, really? Yeah, the, the whole car glows in the dark. You can write your name, you can put your hand and put, put a, a flashlight on it and have a handprint right there on the car. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ecto-1. And it even comes with its own driver. Wow. Gotta love, gotta love being a fan doing stuff like this. So I noticed they have the incinerator and they're working on it right now. Can you tell a little bit of the story to this car? Well, right now it's all pulled apart. Uh, we're replacing a fuel pump and a couple of uh, hydraulic pieces in it. But uh, this is the incinerator. Uh, John Cena had it built. They did it on, on a TV show. And uh, then it was also used in the Gumball 3000 rally back in the day. So it's actually a really famous, crazy car. It's based on a C5 Corvette. But 
with all this crazy hydraulics and uh, it's even got a flamethrower on the back. I don't know if we're gonna try that. <laughs> and he said they just got it, so nobody else has vlogged it yet. As well as they just got one of 50 cents cars that was a million and a half dollar car. Let me show you that. I guess he did this on one of those TV shows where they build him like a classic or some custom amazing car. But they have it here now. I'd be afraid to drive it with that thing down. So here's another new acquisition that he said he just got. And you said you got it from Michael Bay? This was Michael Bay's personal car. What happened is, uh, this was one of the very first Mercedes SLSs to come into the country. And they brought it over for promotional use in, in the Michael Bay film, Transformers 3. It was also driven by Victoria's Secrets model in the movie Tra Transformers and Shia LaBeouf. And uh, after the film was done, Michael Bay liked it so much that he asked if he could keep the car. And Mercedes accommodated. And this has been his personal car for the longest time, and uh, I was lucky enough to uh, get the opportunity to buy it. Beautiful. That is a beautiful car. Even beyond the, the history of it. Rolling door. That is what a Hollywood heavyweight drives. Ford came in. Uh, and basically sponsored the movie. And, I am uh, legend with Will Smith. Yeah, that's correct. And so they gave them six brand new uh, Shelby's. And uh, the Shelby's, as you know, they're all like six speed manual cars and so forth. And so the first day of filming, uh, Will Smith, of course, can drive a manual, but try driving a manual, acting, controlling a dog in the passenger seat, and doing everything. <laughs> They, they figured out really quickly that it was going to be an issue. So Ford uh, got together with Galpin Ford out in California. They put put this car together in, it's a it's actually an automatic GT, and, and Ford supplied all of the, uh, the Shelby stuff to go on it. The wheels, the brakes, the seats, the interior, the, the ground effects and everything, and they put this car together really quick and then they drove it from California to New York so that it could be used in all the scenes and if you notice every scene that Will Smith is sitting in the, uh, the Shelby you'll notice the door panels are black well the door panels are black in a GT in the Shelby the door panels would have red cutouts oh. and so you can actually you can actually tell it's this car. yeah very interesting so, so yeah so sometimes sometimes it's kind of interesting in the details yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now you have a secret warehouse with some stuff in here that you said I could check out and there's one thing in particular I really wanted to see. I think I Actually two going. things now. <laughs> wow. Shredder from Battleship. It's really interesting. Whoa. Oh wow. That is cool. Wow. That I knew right away. That's the Jay and Silent Bob when they're having their like flash to getting the kids high. That that was that scene. That is correct. Crazy. I've seen that movie a bunch of times. Even signed. Snoochie Booches. Oh yeah, the Charlie's Angels car. Wow. So they have a real General Lee down here. And then right above it, John Schneider's personal race car that's themed like the General Lee. So this Falcon, they said, was used in two movies, Ford versus Ferrari and the new Clint Eastwood Cry Macho. Get stuff very, very quickly from wrap. And then that beast up there, it's been painted, but that is the Tommy Boy car. And Joe Dirt, right? Yep, if you walk up to it, you'll be able to see the orange paint underneath there. So it's been used a couple times since then. I believe they painted this for a Katy Perry video. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, they definitely reuse stuff a lot. Absolutely. I don't want to ask you to get it down because of all the work that would be involved. I just wanted to see it. That was just 
so cool. I mean, I know they had multiple cars because that scene with the deer would have completely just destroyed the car. But wow, that's so cool to see one of those cars because I just love Tommy Boy when they're singing Superstar by the Carpenters in there. Is the orange from Joe Dirt. Yeah, definitely. You can see the, he's pointing out the different colors there. The blue would have been from when it was Tommy Boy, painted for Tommy Boy, and the orange from Joe Dirt. Well, I am happy. I got to see the Tommy Boy car, the Muck Cuts, the Rambo motorcycle. What more can you ask for? Well, what more could you ask for? Well, he just kind of surprised me by saying this is the hearse from Dumb and Dumber 2 and said that when they got it, it came with a casket in the back and they think that it's one of the caskets from the mummy. There you can see it in there. So we believe that it is the last car they could order. So they think this was actually Chad McQueen's car, but it was the last car that Steve McQueen ordered and passed away before it was delivered. And that was in Eminem's music video for Purple Pills. He said it has hydraulics and jumps around and everything. And back here he said that is from Twister. Spoiler alert, we're going to be going to the Twister Museum very shortly in these trips. So cool to see that. Even the cracked windshield and everything. There you can see it's got Joey's name on it. And that's Gomez's SUV from Breaking Bad. As far as you can see where they cut the roof off, that's so they could get camera angles from the top. That is so cool. This is Chip Douglas. <laughs> Chip Douglas's car from The Cable Guy. Very underrated Jim Carrey movie. In fact, when I saw it, I didn't really even care for it as much either because I was expecting Ace Ventura or Dumb and Dumber. And then a friend of mine said, rewatch it. And we, we watched it again and God, it's so funny. So well done. Hey, Steven. Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. I was just in the bathroom drying my hair. Wondered if you called. That ever happened to you? Give me a call. We'll talk about it. This is from Rob Zombie's 31. And then look at this gem over here. This is another one that I never thought I would ever see in my life. This is defense car from falling down when he's on that freeway and just completely snaps and leaves the car right there on the freeway and walks away I lived in Los Angeles for 20 years I can tell you I thought of that almost every day wanting to do that that's so cool <laughs> wow Chevette that's Willie Nelson's tour bus because I noticed that he has always had this this kind of uh, cowboy or stagecoach scene on his buses but then check this out your license plate says outlaw Willie Nelson <laughs> this is one of Elvis's boats I somehow got one of Elvis's boats as well And that is Jim Carrey's car from The Mask. When all the doors and everything blow off and the car falls apart. That is awesome. That is the Thelma and Louise Wayne's World 2 car. Oh, that's so awesome to see. What a crazy novelty for them to do for like one little goofy scene. And you guys ended up with it. I love it. That scene. <laughs> Garth's driving, he's got the head wrap and everything, and then they like hold hands and floor it. That's so funny. And here they're showing me a little golf cart that belonged to Michael Jackson. And then if you look from this angle, 
you can see that there's a limousine that belonged to Elvis. Black Fleetwood limousine. I can't believe you just revealed something to me that is just now coming up that you are the son of the great Jimmy Velvet who used to run the Elvis Museum was Elvis's great friend. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's kind of how I came into the museum business. I started working for my dad when I was seven in front of Graceland passing out, passing out flyers going, come see my dad's museum. You that's know? So, so cool. But uh, here's a book that my dad made. And what it has is a lot of different, uh, and this one's a little worse for wear, but it has a lot of different uh, celebrity interactions and different things that he did through, throughout the days. And so, you know, it's kind of, kind of interesting and so. It's so cool. Yeah. Oh, that's when they first met. Wow, very cool. So your dad is on the far left. And there's Buddy Holly. There's, uh, there's uh, uh, Jerry Lee, Jerry Lee and, and Don Everly. Wow. I mean, that's a heck of a lineup. Heck there yeah. To be next to. So I'm looking at their collectible license plates that you can purchase, and I found a couple of really, really great ones. Uh, beginning with defense from falling down. I really like that one. The Roman one from the great outdoors. Of course, the a, a new start. <laughs> and a little bit of LaRusso Auto. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm elated to get to do this because I've been to a lot of car museums in my life, but mostly they always show kind of really, really popular movies, and I don't really want to see the popular cars. I want to see the obscure cars. I felt like I got to do that today, so hope you all enjoyed it. It was a real thrill for Scott to show me around, and they've, like I said, it invited me for the last two years, and I finally made it, and it was not a disappointment. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night, and goodbye. Mm -hmm.